Hello, hello, hello. Hi, it's Dr. Sean from Project Forgive. Tonight is our lecture. We do lectures on Mondays. For those that don't know me, I'm Dr. Sean. I am the one who started Project Forgive. And the whole focus is about bringing people together. So we decided to create this movement with no religion, because religion can be divisive. No politics. Politics are so divisive. And really, where are the commonalities? And then, of course, always upgrading our conversation of making the unconscious conscious. It's all about how do we raise our awareness and what's blocking us from being close to people. And, of course, forgiveness is the magic ticket. And the only thing magical about forgiveness is that it's a process when you embrace it as a process. You know that it can sometimes take a long time, sometimes take a short time, that everybody, how we forgive is as different as our fingerprint. So that's the premise of us. We make a big difference for women in leadership and corporations. And we also focus on teachers to love them up so they can love up our kids. So that's a big part of what we do. Um, tonight's lecture, I'm very excited about tonight's lecture and because I'm in the midst of it. You'll find that the lectures that I do, a lot of times have been what people send to me like, hey, I'm thinking about this. And then stuff that I'm dealing with and like, I know I'm not alone. Okay, and this generational healing is a biggie. I can see you guys are showing up, woohoo! Um, I'll come look and say hi in a second. Let me give you um, some of our announcements. Got a couple of announcements. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Francois from Sketches and Stillness. Everything I mention, I will put in the notes as soon as the lecture is over so you'll have all the links, notes, ideas that I throw out. I usually last about 15, 20 minutes and I always give away a prize. And there's typically some type of sponsor, and tonight it's Francois. I just got his calendar in the mail. You'll recognize sketches and stillness, these beautiful, this beautiful art with the most exquisite, exquisite quotes. And um, he came out with his 2022 calendar, which I just received. Tonight someone's gonna win one, because I'm getting, I'm buying someone one of these calendars tonight when we do, uh, when we do the raffle at the very end, because I always do a raffle. You have to be in the U.S. It's the only contingency. And if you would like to purchase one of Francois' calendars, please go to his website, which I'll put up. It's 18 bucks. Exquisite, exquisite. Okay, Joy is a Habit is one of our Facebook groups. If you're inspired, and we really believe in the habit of joy, and no matter what's going on, that you find some joy to juice you, and just even if it's for three seconds, just getting in that habit of finding joy, because joy typically is something we seek and make a habit rather than something that happens to us. <laughs> when joy happens, and I didn't expect it, I just see it as a little miracle, like, oh, some joy, it's great. Um, what else? Besides the calendar tonight for the prize, of, I'm gonna give away one of our, our uh, Kindness's Contagious Masks, along with a good fat bar, diabetes friendly, tastes just like a Reese's. It tastes really, really good if you don't eat sugar, and I don't eat sugar. So uh, it's got monk fruit in it, it's all natural, it's for keto friendly, it's high ingredients, and I use it as a meal replacement, and I love these bars. So someone's gonna get a bar, get a mask, and also get a calendar tonight. All right, what else? Go see our swag, we got all kinds of swag. We've got masks, we've got forgiveness essential oil that's pure uh, essential oil, the ingredients are exquisite, we had it made for us. And we've got the Apology Necklace. We're really big into accepting the apology you'll never receive. It's one of our tools. And of course, you'll get a, a mask and um, you can check out our mask. I, we're getting ready to put up a new package for the holidays that you can buy four things all at once at a really low cost. That'll be up probably by the end of the week is my guess. All right. If you've purchased in the past and you want to go give us a review, you'll make us so happy, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Etsy, whether it's on our website. We love reviews. And, uh, and if, of course, if something's not right, always connect with us because we always fix it. <laughs> One of the things that happens a lot is older ladies will buy stuff from us, and then their children, their adult children, will say, my mom doesn't need this. So I've had to, like, retract orders because somebody has bought something and the child, the adult child says, no, she can't have that. You know, no judgment there, but just, it happens, it ain't that deep, right? All right, let me see, going down on my list, the Apology Workshop, that, with that actually the date for that has been changed, there's a lot going on in my life. We're gonna be doing lives every other week, at least for now, because I'm getting ready to travel tomorrow, 
and then the next apology workshop is in January. It's January 3rd on a Monday. It's from 7 o'clock to 8.30. Exquisite, exquisite practice on forgiveness that impacts you internally no matter what the other person is doing. And that's coming up in January. I'll put up, I'm looking at probably having that up tonight, okay? Um, and just so you know, the cost for that workshop is $6.99 and no one is turned away, seriously. It, we use that money for scholarships. When you give us stars, we use it for scholarships. And if you have an issue paying $6.99, we will gift you, like no kidding. And the email that you can send to get that, the link and all that is joy at projectforgive.com. And I'll, again, I'll put that all in the, the links and all that good stuff. And seriously, thank you for the stars. So many of you give us stars and um, it makes a difference. It really makes a difference for us to be able to give stuff to people. <laughs> it's really the truth. If your brand's banking new, Say, tell us, because we so, so, so want to welcome you and our community will welcome you. And absolutely, Gabby, you can pay extra for someone else to join. Absolutely. Um, however you want to do that, it's all good. Now, tonight, we're going to talk about generational healing. Let me I'll talk a little bit about explaining it. Then we're going to look at the sandwich generation, because I love to call it that. And you're going to discover what that is. And then some things you can do to help with this. So what the heck does generational healing mean? And it's, I actually feel like that's my only purpose right now as a 57-year-old grandmother, is what can I do to make myself a better person, more awareness around what happens in family systems so I can make it better for my children and my grandchildren. And um, so here's the deal. Gener generational healing essentially is your personal health and well-being, and it's essential to it, and trauma, any kind of trauma, which I'll describe in a second, experienced by earlier generations can influence the structure, your structure, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, as well as genetically. Um, it influences our genes and making it, how it impacts our genes, a trauma from another generation, is that it can switch on like negative responses to stress and trauma in our brain, hormones and glands at any age, can also be affected by past traumas. So what exactly is a generational wound? Well, it's trauma that's a traumatic event that began decades prior to your current generation and has impacted you in ways that you, under, that you maybe don't understand, you just cope with and you try to heal from. And those traumatic events, and everybody has a different experience or understanding of what trauma is. Trauma can be your parent dying when you're six years old. That is a trauma. So whenever I say trauma, it doesn't necessarily mean abuse. My background is really abusive. I'm an incest survivor, rageaholic, come from a rageaholic family, come from an alcoholic, drug abusive family. So I've got a lot of trauma in my past, okay? And I know many of you that come here, you have some of that going on too. So it can be domestic abuse. It can be a parent went to jail. It could be an affair. Because sometimes when an affair happens in a family system three generations ago, it cascades and impacts all the generations. And that's why sometimes you see the repetitive behaviors in every generation. You know, in my family system, every single woman prior to me had to get married. They all got pregnant at a young age and had shotgun weddings. And um, I kind of went through the same experience. Um, I lost a, a baby. I miscarried when I was really young, like 20 or 21. And then um, I did get married at a very young age. And I'm the first person to not to have to get married. And it's changed in my gener and below my, my line of generation below me, that has dramatically changed for many reasons. And that's kind of where we're playing. Here you are, you know, with trauma. How are these patterns repeated generation after generation after generation? It can be someone, a death of a parent, like I mentioned, what trauma is, a long illness, a parent that has cancer for 10 years and you're always figuring out what's gonna happen, what's not gonna happen. And I'm talking about the generation prior to you, right? Um, witnessing violence, um, narcissistic parenting is another biggie. That's a really hard one to break is narcissism in the family system. Neglect is another biggie. And uh, someone even loses their job because it can cause financial trauma in the family and things tr 
dramatically change. And if it happened in previous generations, as you start looking at the different iterations of each generation, you start to see, holy crap, it's being repeated. Because history does repeat itself. We're seeing that happen in all kinds of things in our world right now. Um, so when a trauma happens, we have both emotional and physical reactions to it. And how does that show up? It shows up by anxiety, trouble sleeping, feeling disconnected or numb, confused, um, having intrusive thoughts like excessive worry, um, withdrawing from others. In children, how it shows up, it can look like attempting to avoid school, tummy aches, problems with sleeping, eating or not eating, anger, doing attention-seeking behaviors that are inappropriate. Um, nail biting is another big one. Nail biting is prevalent in my family system. I struggle with my nails. I always have. My, my mother didn't, her sister did, my grandmother did. I'd see it in previous generations and then I watch it with my grandchildren, okay? So this is real, at least I experience it very, very real. So what does this mean, this generation, generational healing of trauma? And then I'm gonna to come to the notes to see what you're saying. We can view like the psychological, spiritual, physical effects of trauma being transferred from one generation to another. And it, even though it began decades ago prior to now, it impacts the way we understand, cope, and heal from trauma. And um, the question I'm always asking myself as I'm diving deep internally is, is this a pattern for my family? How can I break this cycle? So, which leads us into the sandwich generation. Let me see what you guys are saying. If you're saying anything about what I'm saying before I go into sandwich generation. Yep, I'm with you, Kathy. I love calling it the sand, yeah. Yep, I'm with you, Kathy. I love what you're saying. That's exquisite. Yep. Oh, isn't that funny? That's so great, Gabby. I love that you're just loving people up. Yep, Teresa, I'm with you. Oh, welcome, first timer. Yep, Cho Yep. totally get it. Hey, Sandra, I love how you're loving everybody up. Hi, Melba, so glad you're here. Yep, perfect, perfect, perfect. Yep, one of the ways that you can deeply support us is sending stars. I haven't figured out how to do it myself. <laughs> That's on my list, okay? All right, so we're back to this conversation of breaking the cycle, and we're in this conversation of the sandwich generation. I feel like I coined the phrase because I haven't really seen anybody use this. And um, it's being in, like, my, my generation, mine, whatever yours is, I come from lots of trauma, so I've been working tirelessly to heal my relationship with my parents, grandparents, and then while that's going on, and it's, it's and I'm going to swear, it's like a freaking shit show, okay? <laughs> Dealing with all that stuff, excuse my language, once in a while I'll swear, and, uh, and you know, getting all the backlash, the enmeshment, the narcissism, and then you have kids, which I have three children, and I also have grandchildren. I have a total of four right now with a fifth one on the way. And then watching, it's like getting the crap from the generation above and then crap from the generation below. Because when I had my children, I was in a beginning journey. So they still felt the impact of trauma because of my lack of parenting skills. Notice I say this without shame. I didn't know what I didn't know. And I went on a deep healing journey so that the same thing didn't happen to my kids. Was it better with me, with my children? Yes. Is there still remnants of stuff? Absolutely, right? And so it's like having to deal with the upsets from the older generation, upsets from the younger generation. So you're dealing with all these upsets and then you're dealing with your own stuff to heal your own stuff. And I call that a sandwich. I <laughs> would actually call that a poop sandwich. <laughs> Because it's so freaking hard, okay? And so what are the things that we can do, us healers, us choosing to heal and dealing with the older generation stuff and the younger generation stuff, right? So I've got three things that I thought I would give as advice tonight. And um, so how do you break these generational cycles and how do you manage that sandwich position? And the, the thing is, if you keep doing the same thing you've always done, nothing changes. So if you have the wherewithal, the courage, 
to change something and find a new way of communicating, a new way of managing upset, a new way of forgiving. Those are all healing elements that really impacts generationally. And um, so I've got three things. And how I thought I would do it is I do it like when I train, like when I come on um, Facebook, I do some of this in corporations, not a whole lot. It's more business focused. And where it falls in line with personal development, I call them micro decisions because you're making decisions in business at, at your work and at home all the time, whether you're conscious of them or not. Okay, you are always making conscious decisions or unconscious decisions. And the, the types of leadership micro decisions are choosing to appreciate. That's a conscious choice. Accepting the apology you'll never receive. That is a conscious choice. Meeting people where they are to take them where you want them to go. That's another leadership choice. The three that I'm gonna focus on tonight are being complete with incomplete, getting comfortable with discomfort, and making the unconscious conscious and how they specifically apply to generational healing. So being complete with incomplete. So let's say you have a child, you're an adult child going through a divorce and you've already been through one. As a matter of fact, many people in your family have been divorced. And now here's your 25 to 30 to 35 year old child going through a divorce, okay? Woo. Consider that how you respond to this child, because now we're in the younger generation, has a lot to do with your own incompletions. So let's say divorce is the example. If my daughter were getting divorced, I would have to deal with anything that's incomplete around my divorce, because memories are gonna come up, things are gonna come up, like, oh, I remember that, oh, that's so painful. And many times we get enmeshed with our own pain and actually add to our, our the younger generation's pain. So all you have to do, there's nothing to do to fix this. This is a process, not an event. This is a process, not an event. It's about raising your awareness, because noticing is progress. So when I talk to a child that might be going through a divorce, I might be just reminding myself while she's sharing her pain, I'm not gonna tell you how much I can relate because if I keep talking about how I can relate to my child, it actually takes away from her experience. My goal is just simply, wow, that must be so hard. That, those are my responses most of the time, unless she specifically asks me for a specific request of advice. Like, you know, mom, we're getting ready to go to court. Let's just pretend it's that. We're getting ready to go to court. And, I'd, and she, I need a piece of advice. I'll say, well, I got two pieces of advice. One would be, no matter how this goes, because there's grandchildren involved, keep a journal. Keep a journal of, you were, he was supposed to get the kids and he canceled the last minute, a pattern of behavior that he does all the time. Just journal it, just every day, like this happened today. It's painful to do, it's very important, especially when you go to court, especially if you're fighting for custody of your children. You with me? I'm just using a random example, okay? So the, the, the micro decision is allowing yourself to be complete with incomplete. That's a mantra I say to myself all the time. When I can feel my, my past suffering come into my daughter's current problem or my son's current problem, be complete with incomplete. Oh, it's obvious, Dr. Sean, that you haven't finished this part of your own divorce from 25 years ago or 30 years ago. And um, table that right now. You can unpack that later. Right now, be active with your daughter so she can feel your presence. Those are little things that I say to myself. It's hard to do and it takes practice. It's hard to do and it takes practice. It's, um, it, it takes courage to do this kind of work. That's why I love talking about this because I know the people that you guys that come that you're interested in this kind of high level critical thinking work. So there's being comfortable with discomfort, being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, I'm sorry, misspoke. Being complete with incomplete. I'm moving into getting comfortable with discomfort. So I'm looking at my own healing, my own new awarenesses around narcissism 
narcissism is a biggie. Narcissism is a biggie culturally for us because there's lots of narcissism happening politically, socially, spiritually. There's lots of narcissism. And when I'm using the word narcissism, I'm not meaning the actual psychiatric diagnosis of narcissism. I'm talking more about those that grew up in trauma-infested homes. Parents were so involved in their own stuff that they left us kids to their, our own devices and our own healing and our own taking care of ourselves emotionally. We never learned how to take care of ourselves or even to manage to work through feelings or any of that. And how it shows up to the younger generation, like me right now, when I say to a kid, oh, I can really relate, they roll their eyes and they disengage. I've had to learn that it gets enmeshed. And when I say that I can relate, and I really think I'm helping, but I'm not helping with my children, it feels like narcissism to them. Oh, you always bring it back to you and it's all about you. There's many pieces to this. This is just one little example. So I'm consistently finding how I can be there for my younger generation in the sandwich generation of healing and this generational healing. So even if it's distorted on my part, my feelings at this point don't really matter if they're sharing something vulnerably or something that happened to them that they're very upset about. My job is to be a stand for them, hold space for them, actively listen to them. If they need advice, they'll say so and to just be that for them. That's what they really, really want. And so I'm learning the nuances when I say something like, oh, I can really, re you know, like let's say my daughter's getting divorced. I can really relate. I went through the same thing when I was your age. That will not meet a child's needs. I'm learning that. Okay, so this is new for me as I'm uncovering new ways of loving up my children. Because I know if you're watching this, you love your children. You love the upper, the higher generation, the parents, grandparents generation, even if it was hard. We are biologically wired to love our parents no matter what they do to us. We're biologically wired that way. We bond that way, and uh, which even sometimes makes it harder to do all the healing work, right? right? So number three, so, so far we did being complete with incomplete, getting comfortable with discomfort, and then the third one is um, high alert for awareness for yourself, making the unconscious conscious. I've got a great example that just happened. And it's going to look at this generationally. It's going to look at how I soothe myself in the moment, right? And, and it's going to give you some pieces to grab onto if you're in the middle of this kind of sandwich of healing. You generated the healing. Your parents got lots of screwed up stuff, your kids got some lots of screwed up stuff, and you're just still managing to bring as much high level awareness and healing that you can to your family system. That's what we're talking about tonight. So here's a perfect example. My husband's job is to put gas in the car. We are sharing a car. We've never done that before. Okay, we're doing it during the pandemic because we both work at home. That's another journey all on its own. And his job, his declared job, is to put gas in the car. So here it is this weekend. My husband does farmer's markets with the Good Fat Bar, right? So Saturday morning, I'm working this weekend. I worked on Saturday and Sunday. I facilitated a retreat. And, of course, I'm going to shout out the National Arab Orchestra, which I love. I love Arab music. And so a lot of the work that I do is, to, is strategy and dealing with problems. That's what I do. How do we solve problems? So we had a big retreat this weekend. It was all day Saturday, all day Sunday. I, I say, bye, honey, I'm leaving. You know, it's like 9 o'clock in the morning. And um, he says, oh, my gosh, I didn't clear out the car. That's one of our rules around sharing the car is that we don't leave a ton of stuff in the car. It drives me crazy. It drives me freaking nuts. I, my car, when I have my car by myself, is pristine, very clean. You wouldn't even find a straw wrapper in my car. I just love clean spaces. It's my thing. And take my husband, not so much. And he's been gifting me in our agreement of love and intimacy and friendship that he will keep that car clean. And he's actually done a really good job, okay? And so he says, hang on. I said, okay. I go get in the car as he's unloading the car. 
I've got a 45 minute drive and the car is on frickin' E, okay? No gas in the car. You know how like when you get that whoosh in your body and you just wanna kill your partner or kill somebody? I was so mad. And then where I went, can you, can you guys relate to this? Like the hook happens, you're triggered. All right, so it's I'm mean, like this. Okay, clean out the car. And there's no gas. And I'm going to be late. And I'm holding space for all these people. I got so much work to do. So that's what's going on internally for me. In the past, I would have called up my husband. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe there's gas in here. I would have really wanted to know how upset I was so that he wouldn't do it anymore. Well, here's what I learned. <laughs> that doesn't work. All it does is create pain, guilt, anguish. I'm, I'm able to be expressed, but I'm really puking on him. There's no communication, there's no intimacy, there's no solving, it's just crap, okay? So I'm driving, I'm like, okay, breathe, breathe, breathe. Well, another one of my mantras is, when something gets hooked like that, like with the example I just gave you, it's 90% from the past, 10% from the present. That's what I'm noticing about myself. Because if I compare it, and this is what I'm doing in my brain, okay? If I compare it to the lady who brings my newspaper, I read the newspaper every single day. I get the paper every single day. Once in a while, the paper is wet or it's not there. Very rarely. And what I do, because it's business related, as soon as the paper's wet or not there, I'll say, oh, I love so-and-so. I'm not going to say her name because it's not needed. I love so-and-so, she is 99% spot on. Sometimes the paper gets wet, it's not that deep. I can do that in business, I can really do that. With my husband and kids, and not so much, right? So I need to build that muscle. So here I am driving, and I'm like, okay, what if the newspaper lady forgot to put gas in my car? What if it were somebody in business, or somebody I deeply don't have enmeshment or old issues with? I would say, oh, darn it, no gas, got it, sweetie. I, I know, I love how much you put gas in the car all the time. And it would just foster his ability to say sorry, blah, blah, blah. You follow my line of logic. Give me a thumbs up if you're following my line of logic so I know, because I can't feel you or see you. I just see like three people at once. Um, so that's exactly how the conversation went. It was beautiful. He was deeply apologetic, like, oh, I can't believe I didn't put gas in the car. And he's sick, too. Like, and of course, when he, as soon as he's sick with a cold, we think it's COVID. Do we need to go get a COVID test? So there's stress around that. He had a bunch of stuff going on, too. Not to take away what I'm going through. And do I need to be an emotional vampire that every time I have a feeling or upset, I, have, I can just puke on him? And in a, an adult, loving, intimate relationship, that stuff has to be weighed. And it comes from the past. How it's pushed through to the future is by doing it with my husband and, see, and having my kids see that or actually doing it to my children. Because in the scheme of things, it's very rare that that happens. And what got hooked from the past is, oh, my evidence... He doesn't love me enough. If he really loved me, he would have put gas in the car, right? If he would have loved me, he would have had the car cleaned out. How, why do I put that cause and effect in place when it's not real? And that cause and effect is a habit that we do. So raising your awareness around making the unconscious conscious. And even if you find yourself getting really upset and you're used to like just letting everybody know you're upset, we all have different styles. Some of us just keep it deeply in. Some of us just have to puke it all out. I get it, because we're wired differently. When you can just take a breath and start critically thinking about it, this is the present, 10% of the present right now, 90% is the past. Can I let my husband off the hook of generational pain? My generational pain, yeah. So you guys are saying some stuff. Let's see. So yeah, I was going to try. I'm just looking to see what Teresa's saying. Yeah. Totally get it. Let's see. Just looking. I'm getting that thumbs up. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Perfect. Okay. 
So I'm going to get, uh, put in one more idea, and this is a deep topic. This is this requires a lot of brain power. It requires being unstoppable in your own personal and professional growth. And um, I just want to put out an idea. Um, anybody seen the new show on HBO called Mayor from East Town? Mayor from East Town. M A R E from East Town. Um, the gal that was in the Titanic. Trying to think of her name as the, the main star. She's one of my favorite actresses. Um, what is her name from the Titanic? You guys know who I'm talking about. She is a detective in the show. I'm not going to do any spoilers. And there's something that happens in the show that I love. I loved the show. Like, love the show. I love detective shows anyway, trying to find the serial killer or whatever. It was so emotional. It ended very beautifully. It was, it's a mini series, like seven episodes. It was all about healing. For me, it's always a frame of forgiveness. For me, this was a show about forgiveness. It's hard parts, don't get me wrong. There are some hard, Kate Winslow, thank you, Erin. There's hard parts in that. Um, oh, Winslet, oh, perfect, thanks for the update. <laughs> Kathleen, that's perfect, Kate Winslet. Um, it's called, there's so many emotional ruptures, meaning you're dealing with trauma in the present day, and she is in the show. And then something happens that's totally inappropriate that shocks her. She didn't deserve it emotionally or someone yells at her, smacks her across the face, whatever it may be. And it's an interesting conversation to look at that as an emotional rupture because sometimes something shocking like that will wake us up to the healing we need to do. So, you know, maybe it's, you're really kind to someone, and then all of a sudden you're upset about something. I'm really upset, and they storm off because they have zero tolerance for you being upset. Zero. You barely know them or whatever. It's kind of like, whoa. It's like weird. It's strange. It shakes you up, and I see that as an emotional rupture, and I believe many of us experience this. There's been a lot of emotional ruptures, even in the news, watching all the things with you know, the, the court cases that are going on, you know, there's a lot of pain going on with a lot of court cases um, about systemic racism, about what's appropriate, you know, with looting, not looting, how is that going to come down the pike, what, regardless of how you feel about abortion, we are non-political. There's lots of trauma in that arena, and we call it fighting, but I see, and I see those as emotional ruptures. So um, the reason I wanted to say that tonight is because I plan on doing a talk just on emotional ruptures, what those look like and what are the benefits of them. Because usually it's something horrible that happens and it's really hard to see the gold in it, you know, lessons learned. And um, it's more in that vein. So that's why I wanted to, uh, to say that out loud. Yep, I got you, Mariella. I'm with you. Totally get it. You don't even have to say what it is. Totally get it. Okay, so recap, we did, we looked at generational healing, we looked at that sandwich generation, we looked at three things to start practicing, um, getting comfortable with discomfort, making the unconscious conscious, and being complete with incompletions. And um, so that's it tonight. So I'm about to give away a couple of prizes. Same person, one person's winning these prizes. So when you win, you must be in the US to win. You will message me here on Facebook. Only Hailey in my office and me can see messages on Facebook. That's also to let you know if there's something you want to share. Asking A lot of people ask me for prayers. I'm a per, Personally, I'm a prayerful person. I will give you prayers, trust me. And I'll add you to my prayer list. And um, this is me speaking personally, not as an organization, because we're non-religious. Okay? And um, if there's anything, like you see a topic or something comes up that you'd like to see come up in a lecture, please, that's a perfect place to do it. And um, when you message me, when you win, you're going to message us your address, your mailing address here in the U.S., and your email. And we will never put you on an email list. It's never going to happen because I hate it when people do it to me. So I would never do it to someone else. <laughs> and um, so you can track your tracking for your package. So you'll be getting two packages. You'll be getting one from Sketches and Stillness and their calendar, which I'm going to buy for you, okay? And then you're also going to get one of our Kindness is Contagious face masks as well as one of these exquisite good fat bars um, that are diabetes friendly, okay? And you have to be in the U.S. I'm sorry about that, especially with shipping costs. It's um, cost prohibitive 
for us to ship outside of the U.S. unless you're purchasing and paying for that shipping. Okay, so someone's about to win. Here's how you're going to win. You're going to put, let's do a thumbs up in the comments. Thumbs up in the comments. I'm going to say number 16. The 16th thumbs up that I see in my feed is the winner tonight. And I'm going to count them out out loud. So a thumbs up or a version of a thumbs up, whatever your version of is thumbs up, that will actually be in the comments. Put a thumbs up in the comment. Clara's one. We're going to 16. Barbara's two. Mariella's three. We're going to 16. <laughs> Kathy's four. Barbara's five. Barbara's a five. We're at number five. Sandra, thank you for the stars. Judy, six. Clara, seven. You can do it as many times as you want. Clara, seven. Barbara's eight. Mariella's nine. Trudy's 10. Barbara's 11. Angie's 12. Barbara's 13. Barbara's 13. We're going to 16. Lisa's 17. I'm sorry, 15. Oh crap, I lost count. I'll say 11 is Lisa. Our Arlene is 13. Mariella's 14. Kathy's 15. Lauren, it's you, number 16. I'm sorry, I screwed up the count. Will you forgive me? Lauren, 16, so I did the best that I could to fix it. Lauren, number 16, Lauren Long Toe. Message us your address, message us your email, and you will get a package from Sketches and Stillness with your 2022 calendar, and you're also going to get a package from here from us at Project Forgive. Make sure you do it tonight so I can get it out the window, out the door tomorrow, because I'm hopping on a plane tomorrow, okay? Just so you know, I love the thought of people winning more than once and winning many, 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 many times. We love that. Um, that's kind of like a law of attraction thing to me. And um, we love being able to give stuff and injures people. So that's it tonight. Two weeks. I'll be back in two weeks. And I decided to do the topic on caregiving a, a painful parent. So whenever we put up caregiving, any kind of posts or stories or anything, we get so much feedback caregiving a painful parent. I'd probably prefer to use the word narcissistic parent, but it doesn't have to be narcissism for it to be painful. <laughs> and choosing to care give when it, you're so depleted and you're caregiving someone who's painful to be around, how do you get through that? I did it. I've got some great advice. I've got some great learnings. And actually, that process with my mother passing has really enabled me to be unenmeshed, lessen the enmeshment with my children and grandchildren. So I'm healing. It's a good thing. So we're going to talk about that one two weeks. So I'm going to be doing that on the 29th. I'm going to be out of town. So the 29th, 6.30, and the next um, apology you never receive is July, excuse me, January 3rd. You can tell I'm a little kind of bopping around tonight. I got a lot going on and I'm, that I'm processing. A lot of family stuff's going on. So um, I love you guys. If you are, and just, you know, Teresa, narcissistic sister also applies to parents because she learned it from somebody <laughs> in that generational conversation, right? And, um, and dealing with siblings is very different. We can, you know, get to that too. I'm so glad. Uh, thank you, Barbara. Beautiful. If you're inspired, please share us. Anytime you share an article or our post or answer questions, you juice us with our corporate sponsors that really care about a conversation of forgiveness that's non-religious, non-partisan, which is what we really want, really are doing here. So, okay. Big love. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.